Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. We are back in the light campaign today. The year is 1975, and I have a slight confession to make. My more astute viewers may notice some differences in this very screen compared to what we may have ended off with on the last episode. That is because in reviewing the footage and looking into what to do today, I noticed I had made some rather large mistakes on the Truffle Mark II, not so much in the car design phase, but in choosing the factories and plots, I had way, way, way overbought for that car's production, and if I had not done anything, our company would have 100% absolutely gone bankrupt within maybe a year or two. So, I've gone ahead and made some changes to the truffle. Uh, most notably that you'll see it is going to be engineered a little bit quicker because I'm only doing one trim on it. The biggest difference though is I bought a medium plot instead of a large plot, both for the car and the engine. This will limit the amount of cars we can produce, but I don't foresee us having that significant of a shortage, even at max capacity on the factories that we have. But basically, I brought the amount of money developing and producing this car from the 8 billion range to the 1.5 billion range. That is a huge number for what is basically the same car. I mean, I didn't go and completely redesign the car. It is virtually the same. Uh, I guess we can't see that. Yeah, we can. We can at least see the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's virtually the same. It's blue. <laughs> That's different. Um, but virtually the same. And here's the stats here if you wanted to see and compare. There might be some differences along the way, but the spirit is the same and the build is basically the same. But like I said, just the, the factory side of things, much cheaper and much more feasible. And what that allows us to do is go ahead and start working on a replacement for the ankle at the same time as the truffle. If I hadn't done anything, there's no way we possibly could have designed another car until this was in production in 78 and maybe in, maybe even after that like i said it was looking like looking at the numbers calculating out it was gonna be bankruptcy <laughs> was what was gonna happen so it's still gonna be um i think marginally difficult but not nearly as bad and i think i may need to trim down on the r d just a bit just trim down on these a hair uh, we'll leave this at two let it get up to two but we'll leave this at four, and that will be its tech pool. Um, other than that, let's see here. I don't think there's anything else we should divert money to. Geared LSD in 81. To hurry that up would be good. So that's 250,000. I don't know if that's really going to hurry it up enough. I mean, even if we got it at 80, I guess that might be an advantage. But it's overall not fantastic. Um, no, let's save money on that. We'll not worry about that right now. The fuel system, I think, was a big thing. Now we need to see, because I've noticed that the ankle, it's not doing so great, Mark II. Um, this is the oldest car. Sorry, this is the second oldest car. The Roscoska is older. Uh, the Roscoska is still doing okay. But the ankle Mark II has never really done fantastic. It's made a total profit, profit? It has made a total profit, totally profit. Profit of 1.1 billion, which is good, but not nearly as good as the 1.4 billion of the Roscoska. Uh, and overall, it's just been troublesome keeping its sales good and organized. Uh, the Magnet has made a billion now, and that car still has a long ways to go to make money. This one will probably make us billions of dollars as we go ahead. So, let's see here, 77, October of 77 is when the Truffle Mark II goes into production. The leaded fuel ban, that's one thing I want to know. How can I find that information? 
I don't know that I can at the moment. I really don't know that I can. Somebody wanted to see... Uh, let's look at our sales in Fruinia. What is it? Arcana? No. Fruinia. I'm not seeing any. Which is weird, because I thought we were selling there. Huh. That's very weird. I could have swore we were selling there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway... Uh, market? Fruinia? Yeah, I mean, we're not selling any of these kind of cards that they want. Oh, well. Uh, maybe the truffle will do well there. Anyway, anyway, let's see what we should do. I wanted to see when the leaded fuel ban was. I guess I could just make a new car and... How am I going to find this information? Now, I know there's a way. Uh, just select that car. Yeah, that's fine. And anything we want. And sure, I gotta throw a grill on it or it won't build. Yes, front wheel drive, that's fine. V8, whatever. Don't care. Make it tiny. Make it a V6. All of these things, all just to find out when the leaded fuel pan is. Um, I hope it even shows on here. I think I might have to build the whole car to find that out. Hmm. Exit out of there. Get rid of Model 1. Cancel that. How can I find this information? You guys know, and you're probably yelling at your screens, Cone, this is how you do it, it's right here! You moron! <laughs> um, but I don't know at the moment. Yeah, you know what? I'm not too sure. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and play through 75 here. Uh, I'm going to have to watch these cars very closely. Uh, yeah, you see the Roscoe's because it's selling again. Uh, I do want to build up a little bit of stock on the Roscoe's. But more so let the ankle run up now. Maybe run that up to 10,000 because I'm going to use the ankle's existing factory to replace it. Which means there's going to be a couple years there. Uh, where we're not building this car, and we're going to want some stock to sell through. And that will help our profits. So we'll keep doing that, and keep playing through 75 here. Alright, at the end of 75, we had a profit of $113 million. I can tell you right now, if I had not changed anything, I was, I was calculating, I was seeing more of the neighborhood of a loss of a billion dollars that first year of engineering the Truffle Mark II. So, definitely an improvement. Uh, definitely learned a lot. I learned a lot about what to watch out for with the factories and the plots and stuff in that car's build. So that will help us in the future, I think. Uh, I know what to look for. But let's see now. What's the economy doing? Flat in that it's still, it's climbing again in premium and luxury. Um, Commercials on the climb, too, because I guess, well, things are going well. More commercial vehicles are needed. So, the truffle should be doing all right. I mean, the, the budget's okay. It's fine. So, it's not as though the, the magnet's going to be struggling. But I think we do need to replace the ankle, which is our regular sports coupe and convertible. So, let's see what we can do with that. Uh, somewhere in that affordable range. Actually, let me look at the ankle real quick. Alright, so it looks like I can't actually see what the MSRP or what the cost for car is. Perhaps if I go back to this. Markets? Alright, so that one's selling at about 11.9 to keep in mind at a 36% markup. That is good information. New car. Coupe. Let's see here. Last 10 years last 10 years there's two different what's the difference of these two I, I don't really see a difference so that's uh that's an obvious Porsche body I wonder how un Porsche-able it is like can we oh yeah you can bring up the nose <laughs> it's amazing how just that one change makes this look so much less like a Porsche um can you do like a straight up trunk? Is that possible? Not really. You can do a... Well, that actually... 
it took my eyes a moment to adjust, but that actually does kind of look more coopish. Regular coopish. And then square up the back. Yeah. Yeah, that does look good. And the question is, uh, do we dare try to make a rear engine car? We haven't done it yet. I mean, this this thing's perfectly set up for it. Or mid-engine, probably. I guess I'll look into it. I just undid all the changes I made there. Anyway, do those again. Oh, and you can... Oh, wow. You can make that nose huge. Um, I don't think we need the huge nose. I, I want to ploy... I want to ploy with the, uh, the mid-engine thing. Okay, monocoque steel... Uh, rear longitudinal is the only option we have? Okay, so it's a rear engine car. Uh, double wishbone in the back. McPherson up front is fine. Steel. Um. Boy, should I... Yeah, I'll go ahead and design it. Uh, if it doesn't work out, then I guess we'll just be building two cars today. <laughs> Let me see what I can do styling-wise on this thing. So we're talking very late 70s here for the styling. So still with the sealed beam kind of headlights for sure. Uh, roundies are still doable. Like uh, I'm thinking like your Z's, your late, your late 70s 240Z still had a round, you know, regular sealed beam headlight. What is this guy here? Oh, that looks great. That looks fantastic. Looks terrible. As does that. Uh, those are just not gonna work for us. Oh, you know what might work for this car, because that is certainly not it. <laughs> you know what's gonna work for this car? Pop ups. Uh, yeah. Maybe not this pop up, though. There we go, okay. Shrink it down. Shrink it down this way. We're getting somewhere. Uh, the body curves are a little difficult to work with. Alright, rotate a little bit. Oh, snaps on. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, so they would pop up full, like real high, but. I like the, the pop-up with a big curve in it. That's a pretty neat design. Uh, so what do I do with a grill now? Actually, we could de-angle these a little bit. All right, what am I thinking about that? It's still, I think it might be too blunt-nosed. I think I might need to, to lean back that nose a little bit. That's better. That's much better. Okay. And it's still not too Porsche looking, so. But that that's definitely much better. Alright, so, we, I mean, we don't need a lot of grill in the front. That might be it. That might be it. So let's put the badge on the front. Should I put a, like, a reverse opening thing on the front? Does that give you any cooling? Uh, that gives it 48 cooling. It does look pretty cool. So I'm going to do it. Alright, our badge, our crest right there on the front of it. And now for the rear. Definitely gonna need some lip action back here to un unbobble that rear end. Possibly going to make it look far more Porsche like. Uh, I'm not sure about this back end at the moment. Really not sure about it. Oh, you can raise the trunk up. Okay, alright. Well, I looked into that. All right, now let's squish it in a little bit more. All right, all right. All right, spoiler. Now, can you pop up here? Yes. Brilliant. Screw it. I don't care if it looks Porsche-like. That looks awesome. I like that a lot. Should I put a lip on the front? I mean, we got one on the back. Why not? Oh, hopefully it goes wider than that. Eek. Mm. If it's not going to wrap, I might call it off. Yeah, if it's not going to wrap, it's not going to look good. Oh, well. No harm, no foul. If it's a rear engine car, it's probably going to need rear downforce. Anyway, uh, let's continue on. 
those simple taillights work best for this. I really like the very deep, huge turn signals on them that wrap around the sides. That's a neat feature for it. All right, that looks really good, I think. Still need some door handles, and then we'll be done. Let's go for... Actually, let's go for the scoop-style one, just like that. And then we still need more cooling. So where do we put in the vents? One of these kind of delays on the side. That's 267 there. How do we like the way that looks? Further up to the back. Further down to the bottom. I think right kind of where I had it originally is the only place it, it works visually. Narrower. Further this way. That's not bad. That's not bad, but we're still probably going to need a little bit more cooling. I'm not going to probably make this thing's engine terribly high horsepower, because like I said, it's not not marketed. It's not. I don't think it's going to be marketed as like a hypercar, but more of the normal supercar. supercar. <laughs> My brain wants to make a supercar, um, but normal sports car. Just because it looks like a 911 doesn't mean we have to make it perform like a 911 or price like a 911. All right, some vents on the back have taken care of our cooling needs. They're like scoop style, so they're pulling air into the engine cover there. And yeah, I think that's a winner. Let's go ahead and move on. Oh, it does have a convertible body available too, and I think it will work just fine for that. Longitudinal rear wheel drive. How about some different colors? God, I love that green. <laughs> I think every car in this game looks better in this green. The blue is good too. Uh, the darker, yeah, the maroon red's gonna work pretty good. Uh, black is okay. What about like bright white? Oh, that's actually pretty nice too. I like the bright white. Yeah, let's do that. It's a different color for us. All right, engines. So longitudinal. We could probably actually do like an inline four and have it fit. Yep. Inline six. Uh, V6 would fit, V8 would fit, V12, not so much. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking either low displacement V8, really low displacement V6 that revs high, but then do we even have the tech to support that? Probably not. Or do we go with a moderately sized inline four? but maybe like a little aluminum in line four. Too many options here. I think V8 is gonna have the prestige we're gonna need for this car, but then we're gonna have to make it real small, like yeah, three liters or something real small like that uh, for the weight, because if we have too much weight in the back of this car, we're gonna be fighting that the entire time. I also think it's time to start development on overhead cam, like a dual overhead cam setup. Uh, because if we don't do it now, we're not going to be familiar with it in the 80s, and if we're not familiar with it in the 80s, then we're way behind. Engineering time on that is high. What is it on this one? Oh, it's actually low on just overhead cam. So yeah, we'll we'll get started on the, the single jingle, maybe. Um, max RPM average versus... Let's, let's look at the differences here. Friction is lower. Engineering time's a little higher. And the weight is actually more. Is there really that much advantage to this? Should we just skip to dual red cam? And maybe not worry about it yet? Oh, emissions, that's the other thing I was missing. Uh, it is lower emissions, which is gonna be important soon. Soon-ish. Well, let's build it with the, the standard uh, direct over, direct acting overhead cam. And then maybe we'll change that in a revision. Turbos are available, but, um, <laughs> odds are we're not going to have the money to support that yet. Uh, single point EFI. Yeah, we just barely got EFI on the things. Let's do regular, because we're future-proofing these cars now. We don't want it to go too crazy with the fuel mix. We want it to be somewhat efficient too. 
Uh, will it rev to 6,000? Maybe. Maybe. We got two quality to use here. Two quality. Nice. That's more than we had on the truffle. And do I catch straight through on single or dual? Dual gives you more prestige. 295 horsepower? Even that's probably stretching it, to be honest. What's it look like? 184, yeah, because remember, this is, in, this is a very, very low displacement engine right now. Uh, the economy's not great, 9.45. But 178 foot-pounds and 184 horsepower is not, uh, not a number I'm ashamed of for a 3-liter engine at this era. Let's see if we can't get a bit more out of it. We're having bottom-end issues from RPM, which means it's probably... A uh, stroke thing, so we could bore this thing out more. And then maybe shorten its stroke a bit. Yeah. So 3.5 liters and absolutely no valve float, so we can keep going there. Yeah, we can go all the way up to 3.8 liters. That's, that's a little bit more reasonable. 201, 201. Uh, and we still have tuning yet to do here. So we already went pretty aggressive with the cams. I like that our peak horsepower is now within range. And not much compression left in it. 202, 202. Uh, what's the economy looking like now? 9.48. Yeah, that high, that aggressive cam is is a lot to deal with. So we could improve it and, you know, lose a little bit of top end. 9.69, yeah, it's not fantastic. I just don't know price-wise if we're, how we're going to be able to market this and how we're going to be able to afford everything. Uh, so everything in here, I would say, very possible, but uh, it's still very much so moldable. We might make changes here. Uh, oh, well, we're going to need a name. I need to go to the comment section. All right, this guy is gonna be Hewitt, which is a name that I actually recognize from the comments of these automation videos for a long time now. So there we go, that is the Hewitt, and this is gonna be the coupe. We're obviously gonna need a convertible build. And then we're gonna call this a small displacement V8, which is kind of our company's standard at the moment. Uh, and that is the F version of it and I'll go ahead and go through this stuff one time and then bring you in for our final or our first reveal of if this car has a feasible score or not at this point I don't really know there's our moment of truth all right well we've got some light green there but this car has a rather significant handling ailment at the moment so these could improve at any moment let's just go straight to sport. Uh, I don't like what these do with the rear engine cars. I'm gonna need to do a lot of tuning here because yeah, it, it it's presets for the for the stuff that is rear engined is not so great. Tell you what, this is one hair trigger car. <laughs> Trying to get this thing to the side of understeer has been extremely tricky. At the moment, I have it, like, directly between sportiness and drivability. Um, I feel like we probably want that to be a little bit closer to sporty uh, and maintain maybe that point ninety in drivability, but uh, definitely having some troubles getting there as of right now. I don't know what exactly is going on with this, but it can't be great. <laughs> that cannot be an awesome thing that's going on. Uh, tail's going out, tail's going out, and then it gets real pushy. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, it is, at least in suspension terms, pretty sporty and safe. Um, like I said, we're going to need to look into some other things to figure out if this thing is in a market that works. Certainly don't need that much front brake. Uh, rears actually could use a little bit more rear brake, huh? Not that much. All right. So haven't done any tuning with like the interior or any of that kind of stuff, the gearing even. But let's just see. It's very good in pony and pony. Well, very good in pony. It's okay in pony budget, but it's far too expensive for that. 
Uh, sport budget, very good score, decent affordability. Uh, pony budget, like I said, fun premium, very good scores there. Unfortunately, it's not giving me those two. Uh, so let's get fun premium up there. Uh, that's a very small class, but we'll get fun in there as well. Sport budget's a nice one. So let's actually get rid of fun and get sport budget in there. And uh, now let's actually start tuning this car. So gearing-wise, I was pretty close, it looks like. Only 3.1 wheel spin, 5.70 to 60. That's fast. That's very fast for 1978 or whatever this would come out at 79. Uh, that's really quick. And guess what? It gets quicker. 5.6. Um, a little harder to drive. Lots of stagger in this car in the wheel department. 175 front, 225 rear 15s on alloys. That's a first for our company. Uh, we are using one quality point here that is available to us. Uh, the brakes we looked at. This we looked at. Uh, probably going to want to go for a sport interior, right? Let's see. Yes, definitely want to go for the sport interior. Although luxury scores real well in fun premium, sport budget, we want that to have some affordability, and that's still a good score. So let's let's do that. Uh, basic. Not a huge change there. Oh, I actually really like the premium 8-track. So elite. That's very high engineering time. Do we really need that? No. Very minimal scores there. Uh, advanced safety. Better scores. And doesn't hurt the affordability much. A little worried about the cost of that, though. Alright, let's 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 keep going here. Uh, all of this, I don't want to touch anything here because this thing goes mental real quick. Alright, so those are still doable. We still have three easily above 100, and that's kind of the uh, thing I've always been looking for. Uh, and how about with a 20% markup? Uh, then we're only above 100 on the sport budget. So this car is struggling a little bit. I believe it's just a little too expensive. Gotta find some ways to cheapen it up a hair. Alright, going down to steel wheels. Saved us money and uh, the alloys did not really help with the score at all. So there's some money saved. Alright, there's one thing that could potentially save this car's build, although with a fun premium, those are fantastic stats right there. Uh, if we could sell this car for, you know, uh, a 30% markup, 40% markup to these buyers, then we could probably make enough money off of it. But, if the convertible trim ends up being a good hit, then that could save this car. Otherwise, it's going to be questionable. Oh, interesting. That actually changes its uh, stats pretty significantly. Uh, light sport, where is that? Is that not a class? Yeah, I had one of those selected that it wasn't, uh, sport budget, still a good score. Convertible sport, very good scores there. Uh, convertible sport budget, very, very high score there as well. Uh, this is the one that excites me, because that's a pretty big class. And then the convertible score itself is quite nice too. Convertible super is quite nice as well. Uh, regular sport, and then it also, you know, fills in these as well. Um, yeah, the convertible is definitely the model that will save this car from the chopping block. That's, those are very good values, those are very good scores. It's all going to come down to the engineering and the engineering cost. Um, just want to look at some things here. Oh, it went away. Okay, it was like, why was that still highlighted? Uh, let's highlight convertible sport. There we go. And back to this, I wanted to look at things like premium versus sport versus standard. Nope, sport's the way to go with that one, for sure. Not nearly as bad an engineering time as I had feared. It is, you know, a very simple car, actually. It's just simply good at being a sports car. And that's the kind of sports car that I really enjoy building. <laughs> I've enjoyed building this car so far. Um, two years, ten months is is good time. That's like record time for a car like this. Reliability, I'm not so worried about increasing that at all because, honestly, I built this car to have very good... Oops, too far. Very good reliability stats to begin with. 
Uh, we could save some funding on this because we don't need the engine in that time frame. Doesn't hurt anything, right? I want to make sure. Uh, no, just time. Okay. Uh, and then increase the reliability of the engine, so to match the chassis. Very nice. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just a very simple build there. So this will be replacing the Inklemar 2. I'm very sorry, Inkle. So we're going to be using its plot, and we're going to be using its factory as well. Alright, so for the car, we're going to have a medium factory for it, and then the engine, the small one, or sorry, plots. Uh, we need to choose engine and assign. So we're not purchasing, we're not purchasing any plots or factories. We're just going to reuse them. That may be incorrect. I'm definitely going to reuse the plots, but probably not the factories. I think you build new factories for it. But anyway, either way, um, if we go into here, oh, it has the same one selected, but it probably is going to need to be rebuilt, or at least retooled for the new car. I'm just kind of curious. Okay, engine factory cannot meet demand at two shifts. It would have to go all the way down to 1.1. We can improve that engine factory. If we go into here, if we give it more automation, my favorite thing to say, uh, automation costs quite a bit, so you don't want to go too crazy with it, but we're not spending very much money on this build at all. Since it's a replacement car, we can have more cars per day with that. And that small three, that's the biggest we can have. That would get us up to 1.2 shifts. Hmm. Pretty small callback ratios there. Um, is that okay? Let's see here. Uh, what, are we, what are we talking about here? Uh, 6,000 cost per car. Selling them in the 10,000 range, so yeah, it's plenty of, plenty of money. I say that's running at max bore for engines. Uh, 109 per day, I think is what it's saying, or week. Is it week or day? Per day, 109 per day. Hmm. 110 is not going to get us much more. Uh, it's like uh, $100,000 to get us that. And we still can't even get another point of percentage out of it. But there's not much else I can do with it. And uh, this is going to be a low, low production vehicle with a high margin. So I think that's all right. Uh, let's see. This is the Vert, which, again, still scoring very, very well. 112 rating and a 96.9 uh, affordability very good there that's one of the best we've had uh, then very good in sport budget as well and good in other things like fun uh, Fruinia it would be fantastic in a lot of things in Fruinia so we might sell some there as well let's look at the coupe and the coupe says fun premium uh, family sport you have a real small family. Uh, pony is okay. Muscle is okay. Sport is pretty good. Sport budget is is real desirable, but uh, not great on affordability. Overall, I think this one's going to be the weaker selling of the two, which is okay because we need to produce more of the convertibles anyway. Uh, we don't have a lot of range there. Let's see here. <laughs> um... There's been a lot of times in my life that I've been wrong, and this may be one of them, because as of right now, it's saying our demand for coupes is way bigger, because those those categories that it did well in are much bigger sales categories. So as of right now, 7.27 to 1, demand versus production. Ouch. But, that just means we can charge, you know, 50% more for it. And this one, 30% more. And even if we're not able to keep up with the demand, uh, we're always able to charge more for it to help pay for it. So let's see what the numbers would look like with that. Pretty good. So, <laughs> just to give you guys an idea to something I talked about earlier. Uh, you see this grand total right here? The grand total on this project would be $279 million. 
Uh, the grand total on the Truffle's first build, I believe, was $8 billion. A little bit of difference there. A little bit of a difference. Um, this won't be a huge seller. It's not going to make a huge splash for us, but I think it will effectively replace the ankle in our lineup, which is going to be non-sellable in some near future point that one of you very lovely, helpful commenters is going to clue me into where I could have found that information. Maybe I can still find it, though. Um, Alright, here we go. Here we go. This is definitely where I'm going to find it. In Gazmea, the leaded ban is in 1982. So, in what uh eight years so yeah the ankle definitely needs to go and this will be up and running for that we may even see the sales increase on this thing in 82 as other cars get knocked out of the market uh in fruinia in 78 so already like when this car is produced let it van will be in so it might do real good there uh it's good in light sport it's good in sport good in track premium I don't think there's a lot of cars sold there, but it should be all right. Uh, does that say displacement? 1984? Does that mean this car has too much displacement to sell there? That's possible. That's a bummer. <laughs> um, <laughs> never mind then. Never mind then. Huh. Emissions are also important in 82 for a guy's man. Okay, anyway, getting distracted. It's still saying we're selling cars there, or could sell cars there. I don't know. I don't know. Don't understand that one completely. This looks good, though. We're going to sign off on that. Those are the two cars we're going to build. Uh, the Roscosca will just, I think, fade away. And then, in maybe 78... Yeah, let's see how the Truffle does. Its initial sales are looking. Let's see what the economy's doing. And then in 78, we'll start looking at a Roscosca replacement which I think is going to be our sedan slash sports, big sports car. That That's what I have in mind. Let's see how it goes. Do I need to adjust anything first? Uh, looks like I need to adjust the ankle a little bit. Like I said, I want to build up a stock of these. I still got no verts. I got no verts. I need more of them. Uh, I'll charge more for them and build a few more. Great, thanks. Actually... We might be hitting engineering or redoing the factories for the Hewitt pretty soon. So I'm going to max out. I'm going to like really increase the the amount of these we're making. As many as it can possibly handle, which is not that many. Oh, also the Roscosca sold out. You sell out. All right, we'll make some more of those. This game's stressful. All right, lost a little bit of money this year, but not bad for having two cars in engineering. That is not bad at all. I can deal with that. All right, pause. Let's look at the economy. Still, premium is now above one. Over one. Luxury is over almost to one, two, five. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Um, it's also really great that it's doing this now, because odds are... By the time we hit 78, you know it's going to do one of these. You know it's going to happen. So I think the uh, I think the utility vehicle, the Truffle, is going to do real well. Uh, and I think the, the Magnet will continue to do well. And then the Roscosca and the Ankle, they're ending their life cycle right when times are great for them. So this is all going pretty well. All right, the Truffle has just hit the market. And everything's looking good so far. Let's revise. Let's see how it's doing. We sold 10,000, like, instantly. Uh, in the first month, we sold every one. So, we can't make any more of them. All we can do is charge more money for them. Aw, shucks. <laughs> Darn, we have to charge more money for them. That's a shame. Um, the magnet... I believe I could start to cut down on it a little bit since things are going so well in the economy. Uh, we'll sell it at a little bit lower of a markup and probably just make a little bit less of them. Let's see here. We want to also... I don't know why I was breaking into song there. 
I also want to reduce the production of these guys a bit. All right, continuing on. That is fine. 2,000 of those is not that many. Although we are starting to lose money on it, aren't we? Um, so never mind. Let's actually cut back on that a little bit too. All right, so this year, the last year, we were engineering two vehicles at the same time. 67 million lost a drop in the bucket. We're still at the $3.4 billion mark, so we're still at an overall profit. Pause, economy, premium, luxury are climbing even more over 125. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. Budget's actually on the decline now. Nobody wants these crappy budget cars. Uh, and you can see that in the magnet, because it's just not selling that great, but it's still making money. We still have made $1.8 billion on it. Uh, not quite the $2.145 billion that the Roscoska has, but it's actually starting to lose a little bit of money now. I think it's starting to become a little outdated, not very competitive. Uh, yeah, demand is now 0.77, so yeah, we're just going to have to make less of them. Poor Roscoska. Let's go ahead and uh, I, w I said that 78 was when I started wanted to start to make the Roscoska replacement. I'm gonna give it another couple months here. There we go, and there we go. That's good. Uh, just so I can see that the truffle is gonna be doing well, and it really seems like it is. Or I mean. I do wish I had been able to afford the huge factories for this thing, but I just couldn't quite do it. Uh, but like I said, we're just going to be making tons of markup on this car. Tons of markup. And that will peter out in the future. Um, total profit, 262. Uh, we're profiting 54 million currently. Uh, I think that's per month or per year? I think that's per month. Possibly, which is very nice. That's a higher number than I've seen any of the other cars doing at their peaks. Uh, the ankle, it's ready to go. It really is ready to go, and it will be going soon. So we'll have plenty of those to sell off. In fact, I'm probably... Yeah, 33,000 of them? I should probably just stop making them. Just cut it way back. Way back. Yeah. And I think that is where we will call it for today. Thank you, as always, for watching. I will save here, and we'll pick up here next time. Hopefully I didn't do anything horribly, terribly, awfully wrong and don't have to redo anything for the next episode. But uh, yeah, otherwise, I will sign out of this episode bizarrely and say goodbye. Okay, see you next time. Automation. Yeah.